ziua. Vă mulțumesc foarte mult pentru că ați binevoit să veniți în această sală, să audiați conferința, care sunt sigur că va fi deosebit de interesant a domnului ambasador, excelența sa în Șorendil. Domnia sa și-a început misiunea în România de câteva luni doar și a binevoit să facă prima vizită la Universitatea Românească, la Universitatea babeș boiei Domnul Fiorezeu, poftiți uh, Și firește, datorită, și datorită faptului că această universitate a avut înțelegerea și, aș zice eu, chiar curajul de a aproba și de a susține deschiderea primei, primului institut de topologie și de studii central asiatice din România și nu numai din România, ci și din această zonă în care se află Clujul. Și ca o prețuire a acestui gest al Universității noastre, domnul ambasador a binevoit să facă această vizită la Institutul nostru de care acum venim de acolo, unde am avut discuții și Dânsu a vizitat și a fost, l-am pus la curent cu activitatea Institutului nostru, a fost foarte mulțumit și suntem convinși că prin Dânsul, Turcia și uh, organizațiile și instituțiile academice din Turcia vor ajuta Institutul și în același timp relațiile dintre universitățile din Turcia și Universitatea noastră se vor amplifica și se vor întări. Aceste relații sunt, acum există, ele se desfășoară, dar suntem siguri că de acum înainte ele se vor dezvolta și mai mult. Subiectul pe care domnul ambasador îl va aborda astăzi este un subiect cât se poate de actual și deosebit de interesant. Nu este nevoie să intru în mai multe detalii legate de această problemă, iar domnul ambasador îl va relata la obiect despre această problematică. Dat fiind faptul că domnul ambasador se gândește să plece în, în, la București, pentru că are în seara aceasta niște întâlniri foarte importante, timpul domniei sale fiind extrem de limitat, probabil că nu va avea timpul necesar să dezvolte foarte mult acest subiect, care este foarte larg și foarte important, dar uh, ne-a promis că în primăvară va veni din nou în, uh, la Universitatea babeș boiei va veni în Cluj, care i-a plăcut foarte mult, deși a, a văzut a vizita foarte puțin în dimineața aceasta, atunci va sta mai mult și atunci vom avea posibilitatea să stăm mai pe îndelete de vorbă cu domnia sa. Încă o dată vă mulțumesc că ați binevoit să veniți și sper că veți fi mulțumit de modul în care, uh, în care uh, vă va informa domnul ambasador despre această uh, problematică. Acum îi dau cuvântul domnului ambasador să uh, uh, dezvolte tema care a fost anunțată. Mulțumesc! Mulțumesc! For coming here. I'm sorry, my Romanian is very poor, so I will have to hold my uh, conversation in English. And I really thank you very much for being here, sparing time uh, for this meeting, this conference. At the outset, I wish to express my heartfelt thanks to the government of Romania, to the director, His Excellency Mr. Andrei Marga, and Professor Excellency. Mr. Tassin Jimmy, the director of the Institute for Turkology and uh, Central Asian Studies, and my dear friends, also our uh, honorary consul, <coughs> Mr. Dita. Uh, after this introduction, I wish to first of all touch upon the issue, the fact that Turkey and Romania, they have deep rooted relations, historical relations, and Presently, our relations are excellent. We have a very high level of bilateral contacts. Our trade volume is about $6.5 billion. We aim to increase it to $10 billion in the very near future. We are both members of NATO and Black Sea Economic Cooperation Organization. Our bilateral cooperation is excellent. And 
and uh, high level visits will continue to take place in the near future between the two countries. With this brief uh, introduction, uh, our uh, subject, our title today is the events in the Middle East and North Africa. <coughs> we briefly call it MENA area, MENA region. And uh, I happen to be uh, the ambassador of Turkey to Libya between 2007 and 2009. And after that, I was the director general for North Africa and Middle East and South Asia in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And before I was appointed as ambassador to Libya, which I'm very happy and honored to be here. Uh, throughout history, uh, the Middle East region has been a region of turmoils, wars, conflicts, but also it has been the cradle for three great celestial religions, as well as uh, a lot of global richnesses. It has been the root, the global root, for the main trade throughout history. It has also, with this attractive values it bears, of course, being unfortunately an area of conflicts, <coughs> armed conflicts, clashes and wars. Recently, what we have been observing in the Northern Africa region and in the Middle East is actually a transformation which was inevitable and which seems to be irreversible. This is a historic era of change and transition. Uh, of course, the dynamics and the realities of each and every country are quite different. I mean, take Tunisia, take Egypt, take Libya, take Syria, whatever. But there are some things in common uh, among these countries as regards to these uh, movements, this transition, transition movements. First of all, they were all triggered by the impact of the technological, so-called technological revolution, especially in the internet and communication uh, area. So now the people, the peoples of the countries are uh, in constant and <coughs> urgent contact with one another. They can follow what's going on in the world and they can communicate very easily and very quickly. This is an unprecedented transition period. Uh, there are some uh, characteristics in common, as I have mentioned, uh, when the uh, so-called Arab Spring started and evolved. First of all, there was no specific leader or leadership. There was no group or political party or whatsoever who led this, these movements. There was no specific uh, ideology. There was mass movements, actions uh, performed by the peoples themselves and uh, desire for democracy and human rights was the main principal element which underlied these uh, transition there is the question of which is which has been uh, discussed broadly and righteously, I believe. Uh, the question of safety, security on the one hand, and uh, liberty and democracy, not democracy, but liberty and human rights, let's say, freedom on the other hand. I think uh, both are possible simultaneously. In other words, we don't have to uh, sacrifice one for the other. I mean, we don't have to sacrifice freedoms or liberties for security and safety or vice versa. There is one catalyst which could bring them together as a cement, which is democracy. With the uh, development of democratic structures, uh, rule of law, free elections, free and fair elections, parliamentary systems. This can be possible. Romania is a very good example of uh, this uh, democratic structure changes since 90, early 1990s. Also my country, uh, 
because <coughs> uh, in the course of past 80, 90 years, in a transition uh, towards democracy, and today both our countries are very glad to uh, observe and say this that uh, our democratic parliamentary system countries. Uh, all these uh, newly emerging uh, uh, movements or democratic uh, aspirations in the northern of Africa and the Middle East are, uh, of course, in need of assistance, but they don't need big problems. They don't need uh, green slogans to be, you know, uh, directing them towards certain Targets. We should all together combine our efforts to assist them and uh, to share our experiences in the course of democratic process, also economic development and social and structural uh, <coughs> works and establishments. We should share our experiences on these crucial issues. The <coughs> Actually, this uh, process, what happened in the Middle East, is a natural outcome of uh, the peoples uh, of the area, of the region, <coughs> to, to, in search of democracy and freedoms and liberties. Turkey and Romania, they, have, they both have uh, open societies, pluralistic political systems, and uh, comparatively strong economies. Uh, we are not, uh, as Turkey for instance, we are not uh, claiming that we are role models for these countries. Every country has its own characteristics, but we provide a source of inspiration, hopefully, if we can. And we can help only if this is asked from Turkey. But we should not let, of course, these uh, processes be hijacked by credible groups who wish to start some sectarian, ethnic or ideological conflicts in the area. We are, as I have mentioned, ready to share democratic experiences with the new democracies of the region. And we are willing to enhance political and economic consultation mechanisms and increase our technical cooperation with the regional countries. Actually, what happened in Tunisia and Egypt are, of course, different than what happens, still happens, in Libya or in Syria. But as I have mentioned, the, the common features of the movements in those countries, Yemen or Bahrain, or you can, you can uh, prolong this, the common characteristics or features of the movements are the <coughs> desire of the people for liberties, for more Freedoms, freedom of speech, freedom of uh, movement, whatever, in that regard, and uh, the lack of authoritarian regimes to provide peace for the people. So, this is the gist or the main uh, bottom line of what is going on, in my opinion, in the MENA region. And uh, actually, we can write volumes of books on, on this issue, taking each and every country <coughs> separately or for, in a group, a system of uh, reason and logic. But uh, I think I don't want to consume too much of your time. And uh, probably I, sh I should better stop here. And uh, so I hope I could have provided you with the main lines of, of what is going on in, in the Middle East and North Africa, in my opinion. Don't you think that there is some uh, other reasons to this uh, sudden uh, revolution? I mean, um, this need for democracy, don't you think that there are some external interests in the MENA region from some other political powers, not just the ones involved, directly involved? Uh, thank you for the question. First of all, it is not sudden uh, because we evolved 
in the course of past 30, 40 years. Take the Gaddafi regime in Libya, it is the 42nd year of this year. The Mubarak administration, if I'm not mistaken, is more than 30 years. Uh, ben Sari in Tunisia <coughs> is the same. So it's not sudden. Uh, it has been evolved uh, throughout some decades, like three, four decades in these countries. Of course, there's, uh, there might be some uh, inspirations, some uh, interactions, because I have mentioned, I mean, if not intentionally, but still, I mean, because people can now sit in their living rooms, lie down in their bedrooms and watch the whole world, what's going on in the world, through the televisions and internet, and they can communicate with each other. So we cannot uh, uh, talk about countries in isolation in a contained sphere. But uh, I believe uh, these were not controlled from outside, and these evolved uh, as a result of a natural uh, outcome of the historical events and developments. First of all, congratulations for your speech. It was very interesting and useful for us. Very embarrassing, thank you. <laughs> and my question for you is, if Turkey gets involved more in the northern, in the MENA, MENA region, has it to sacrifice the relationships with other countries? Uh, yes, no. The answer is not. Uh, it is a very short answer, but I'll try to uh, explain it uh, more. Uh, no, it is not an alternative. Uh, I mean, uh, I understand your question. Is Turkey, let me put it this way, maybe it is more bluntly, is Turkey sacrificing the relations with Europe at the cost of the relations with the Arab world and Middle East? No. Uh, we have uh, traditional very close relations, both with Europe and with the Middle East region. Uh, we have uh, even uh, you know, relatives in all these uh, areas. So Turkey cannot be isolated from this region. And uh, what we are uh, trying to do, as I have to try to explain, is to uh, provide our experience now, Turkey today is the sixth largest economy in Europe. I'm not trying to boast my country, but this is a fact. And 16th in the world. So we are within the G20 group. And uh, to a very big extent, we have uh, accomplished the democratic pluralistic uh, structure in Turkey. Now the parliament is working on an even uh, more liberal constitution. And uh, so, with all this uh, experimental background, we are trying to share our experiences with our uh, friends or with the peoples of the region. And it is to the benefit of everybody, I mean, Europe as well. My question is, uh, how, how important is the integration of Turkey within the European Union in solving this zero problem policy of maximizing, minimizing the conflict yeah. and maximizing cooperation? Yes. A good question, actually. Yes, uh, it will be to the benefit of everybody if Turkey is with the EU. Uh, our uh, Minister for European Affairs, Mr. Bausch, has uh, put it more bluntly than I did. Europe needs Turkey more than Turkey needs Europe these days. I mean, uh, we are not uh, trying to negotiate, uh, to take a negotiating position, but this is a fact. And we feel Turkey belongs to you. Uh, we feel uh, our uh, <coughs> economic, political, social, cultural structures are really important. And uh, I believe uh, a lot of Europeans and European states uh, also think in this direction. And on this occasion, I wish to express once more our heartfelt thanks for Romania for their full support of Turkish. Uh, integration or negotiating uh, process with the EU. And, but this, this will be the benefit <coughs> of everybody, the EU, the Middle East, to everybody. Thank you. Mulțumim, Excellency Salem, și 
vreau să vă mulțumesc pentru prezență și sunt extrem de încântat pentru faptul că ați venit într-un număr atât de mare, ceea ce înseamnă că atât tema v-a fost foarte sugestivă, pe de o parte, iar pe de altă parte văd că manifestați interes pentru ceea ce înseamnă istorie, civilizație turcă, respectiv Asia Centrală, cum am văzut Nordul Africii și Orientul Apropiat. Și cred că vom reuși să obținem permisiunea Domnului Ambasador, nu numai să ne mai fac în o vizită, așa cum de admite, în s a promis, ci și să ne ajute să promovăm în cadrul Universității Babeștoiei, mult mai consistent decât până acum, ceea ce înseamnă limbă și civilizație turcă. Și cred că vor fi suficient de mulți doritori să facă acest lucru. Aș vrea să mulțumesc de asemenea și să vă prezint și alți invitați care au venit aici, în această conferință. În primul rând este vorba despre domnul Consul Honorific al Republicii Turcia la Cluj, domnul Vinton, care este aici prezent, și de asemenea doi tineri colegi profesori turci, care au deschis deja la Cluj pentru învățământul preprimar și primar, instituții de învățământ particulare, ceea ce înseamnă că există deja o colaborare foarte strânsă și în ceea ce înseamnă mediul educațional. Și nu în ultimul rând, de ce vei revenim să ai ambasador și dumneavoastră pentru prezența atât de numeroasă și consistentă prin întrebările pe care le-ați adresat. Sorry to take the floor again, but uh, I hope you're not bored of me. I, I will just in conclusion thank you for being here and sparing your time for, for us. And I am very happy to be with you. I have children of your age and elder than your age, uh, so I'm very happy to be in front of such a dynamic, intelligent and eminent audience. Thank you very much. Mulțumesc! Mulțumesc!